In this video, I'm going over how to use the new Fitbit Versa 4 for beginners. Hello and welcome in. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. Today I'll be walking you through how to use the Fitbit Versa 4 for beginners. Here's a quick rundown of what I'll be covering in the video today. First, I'll be going over a basic button navigation. So what all the buttons do, how to navigate uh, the entire watch. Next, I will move into the app, how you change the clock face, and also how you download new designs. From there, we'll transition into how to customize your notifications. You can decide which apps you want to send notifications. Next, I will move into how to answer the phone if a call comes through and how to decline a call as well. From there, we'll move into how to add a credit card so you can use your Google Pay. And then we will end with how to change the watch band. Make sure you check out the comments section. I will have links to some great accessories to go with this watch. All right, let's get started. So we have a button on the left side. The only button on the watch is going to be on this left side here. Now one tap will wake up the watch. Also, just turning your wrist will automatically wake up the screen. Now, if you ever find that turning your wrist does not wake up the screen, you'll actually need to swipe down from the top. This will take you to your quick settings. You want to make sure that this icon is not lit up. That is the screen wake button. So when it's not lit up, it means that the watch is set to wake up whenever you turn your wrist. But if I tap the button for screen, screen wake, now when I try to turn my wrist, it won't turn on the screen. So make sure if you ever have that problem of the screen not waking up, it's just a swipe down. Make sure this is not lit up and that will ensure that when the screen is off, just turning your wrist is what will turn it back on, okay? Now, this button on the side here is also, it serves multiple functions. So again, when the screen is asleep, tapping it will wake up your screen. Now, you can also, when the screen is awake, by tapping the button, it will take you to a recent section along with all the apps that are on the watch here. So my alarms, a, a shortcut to the, your Alexa feature. Um, you can start a workout, use Fitbit Pay, do the relaxed breathing setting, or just your main phone settings here, timers, today view, and the weather. So once again, screen is on, tapping that button will take you to your apps and recent apps. You can also double tap the button to take you to a shortcut that will take you to your uh, Amazon Alexa, again, to launch the assistant. You can also go to your notifications to see if you have any new notifications, for example, a text message or a phone call. Those will show up in that section. Now, also, you'll have a shortcut to your settings and a shortcut to your Google Pay. So that is just a double tap of this home button right here. So again, one tap recent apps, two taps, shortcuts, and you have a third option, which is a long press. So press down. This will lead you to a customizable option that will allow you to select what feature would you like to launch when you long press. Now, you can do an alarm, a timer, you can have it jump right to the weather, settings, um, if you're really into fitness, you may want it to go right to your today view to see your stats for your Fitbit. Um, I'm going to program it for myself to the voice assistant. And now, whenever I hold down that button, it will begin listening for a command and then I can ask Alexa to do different things. So let's try it right now. Hold, set a timer for two hours. There we go. Now I find this most helpful just throughout the day as I'm doing different things. For example, if I'm doing laundry, I will set a timer for that to know when it's time to switch a load. I might set it for when a show is coming on, I don't wanna miss. So 
Um, it's just great to have that shortcut right from that button. That's why I personally like to make it um, the Alexa shortcut. All right, so we've gone over buttons. Um, I gave you a preview, but let's dig deeper into this settings, this quick settings, which is just swiping down from the top of the screen. Now you have six options that will show up here. You have a do not disturb button right here. So calls and notifications won't vibrate the watch. They'll still come through, but you won't get a vibrating notification. We also have our night mode or sleep mode, which will lower the brightness and it'll turn off the screen wake, so when you turn your wrist, it won't turn on the watch. Next, we have the uh, shortcut to your settings. Now this will take you to the full settings menu here, and as you can see, this will give you a lot more in-depth options uh, for controlling your Fitbit. Then we have what is called the always on display shortcut. So by tapping this, we turn on a feature called always on display. And when this is enabled, when your Fitbit goes to sleep, it will still show the time. So for example, I'm gonna just turn my wrist or turn the Fitbit to turn it off. And you'll see that it will still show the time even though the screen is technically asleep. And now I love this feature. Now keep in mind, this will drain your battery slightly. So um, that's why some people opt not to use it. I still like to use it because I love to see the time no matter what. So this way you can always see the time. And again, if you wanna wake up your Fitbit, you would just do a more violent turn and that will wake up the screen. But that is the always on display. Now let's swipe down again. We have our screen wake button that we went over earlier. And lastly, we have our uh, brightness. You can control the brightness simply by tapping this option here. You can go to a max brightness for it to be super bright, as bright as it can be, a dim brightness, or just a normal brightness. Depending on where you are is going to determine what is the best brightness. For example, if you're in a movie theater, you'd probably want to dim it down. And if you were outside, you'd actually want to turn it up to make sure you can see it in the sunlight. And then of course, at the very bottom, you'll also see your, oh, I hit all these buttons. You'll see your battery percentage, so you'll always know how much battery you have left. So those are gonna be your quick settings, and that's accessed once again by just swiping from the top. Now, if we swipe up, we get to our notification section, and we can see if we have any special notifications for example, a text message or a notification from an app or even a missed call. Now, if we swipe right, now this again will not change left or right. This will take you to what are called your tiles. And these are just different screens that give you different pieces of data. So this is gonna be your Fitbit Today screen. We keep going, we have our heart rate. We have our sleep tracking. We have a shortcut to our timers, so I can set a quick five minute timer or a 10 minute timer or hit new to set a more customized timer. We have a shortcut to our weather. Um, we have an exercise shortcut to select some of uh, a preset option at the top here, walking, running, biking, or hit all to get to a more extensive list of the different exercise options. And then, we also have, oh, that's it, excuse me. So, and if we swipe again, we'll be on our home screen. So swiping left or swiping right won't make a difference. They will just take you through the carousel of the different tiles you have on the watch. So that is our walkthrough of just navigating the Fitbit. Now we'll need to jump to our phone now to look at some of the other controls that we have access to. So I'm gonna to jump to my phone and we'll jump right into the Fitbit app so you can see what else you can control. All right, so we're here. Now you'll need to go to the upper left corner and tap on your profile icon and then go to your Versa 4. And here you'll have five uh, different main shortcuts 
and then you'll have some general options that are at the bottom here. Now, uh, we're going to start with changing the watch face, and you'll do that by tapping on the gallery. The gallery will take you to all of your different watch options, and it will also give you the option to download new watch faces if you'd like to add more that don't come with the uh, stock store. We're gonna tap on the plus, and that will allow us to add a new clock. You can have up to five favorites that are programmed, and again, you can change those out whenever you want. Um, this is gonna be the store where you'll find different uh, watch faces that are available. I always like to start with by Fitbit because these are the watches that are designed by the company and they tend to work the most seamless. So I would say start here. You have a new option now that will allow you to separate the watches by free and paid. I always like to start with the free just to see what is free and look at paid after I've gone through the free options here. Now some of the watch faces will have a gold ring around it. For example, this one has the gold ring this one has a gold ring. And when you tap on these, you will see a try premium button. And it appears that these are only available if you have the Fitbit premium membership. So just keep that in mind. Um, so if I try to tap on it, it's gonna take me back to the membership page where I would need to sign up for the premium um, membership. So if you have the membership, great. It means you'll be able to download those watch faces and use them. Um, I'm not currently using the premium membership, so I guess I won't be able to use those, no problem. I'm gonna hit the X in the left corner and hit the back arrow in the left corner again. And let's try this watch face here. This one is pretty cool. I can tap on this button here. Notice the button says install, it doesn't say premium. That's how I know it is a free watch face I can download. I'm gonna tap on install and you'll need to simply um, enable all the permissions. So I'm just gonna select all at the top, hit proceed, and then it will begin to download that. Now it won't show right away, not to my knowledge. Um, oh, actually, no, excuse me. If we hit install, it should install it right on the Fitbit immediately. In the past, that was different. You would install it and you still, you had to select it in the app, but it looks like they've updated that, which is great. So, as you can see, this one installed super fast. And guess what? I've just changed my clock face to this new option here, SPO2 Blue. And we can, again, go through. There are lots of cool options in here, so take your time, find some great options. And if we go back, let's see, let's go back again. Go back to gallery. We should see this one, so it's not gonna show up under my clocks. So we have the original band, or excuse me, the original clock face here, and now we have our new clock right there. So again, just hitting the plus will take you right to the clock section and allow you to go through and select uh, new clocks to add to your watch. All right, so that's downloading clock faces. The next thing I wanna go over is how to customize notifications. This is something you need to turn on. It won't automatically be enabled. So I'm gonna tap on notifications. And so calls automatically turned on. For text messages, it's automatically turned on. Now some phones do have multiple messaging apps. For example, you might have uh, WhatsApp, you might have Facebook Messenger. And so you can customize it in this menu here and you can say, hey, you know what? I only want WhatsApp text messages to show up. I don't want regular text messages. This is the, the section where you would make that change. Now for emails, it's currently defaulted to Gmail, which is fine, the only one I use on this phone. Again, if you had multiple email options, this is where you would change it. Next, we have app notifications. Now this is the important one. So here you can go through and tell it I want to receive notifications from these specific applications. This will help from you being bombarded with notifications for things that you don't care about. So um, let's go through here. Maybe you say, hey, I want Instagram, but maybe you say, I don't want Twitter notifications. You don't have to enable that. You can also have Google Map notifications as well. 
So if you have directions pulled up and the phone is alerting you in real time, it will also ping your watch as well. So you'll wanna go through this list and you'll want to just select the things you want to be notified about. And obviously the things you don't want to, just don't check it, just that easy. All right. Um, clock alarms, I would say enable this because sometimes we do set alarms on our phone and not on the watch. So if clock is enabled, if you have an alarm set, it will vibrate your watch as well. So that is the notifications. Now you can also set up another really important option in here, which is going to be your quick replies. Right here, it shows quick replies. And what is a quick reply? Basically, for example, when you receive a message in these different apps, you can have a pre-selected response to uh, reply with. So for example, in messages, if I get a text message, I can hit one button and then I can go in and have one of these five responses that I can select to reply. This is great when you're driving or when you're working out and you don't have time to actually type out a response. You would simply just select a quick reply and then you can send that right from the watch. So again, we have yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, we'll reply later, what's up? Um, you might want to just tap here and change it and say in a meeting. That's a very common uh, reply in a meeting. What's up? You can change it to that instead. So you also have an emoji section. You'll have some shortcut emojis you can use to auto reply. And that is quick. That is your quick reply section. Um, once again, these are um, some of the apps that will, these are the apps that we have programmed for notifications. So these are the ones that will show up as options to have quick replies. If you select more apps for notifications, then you will be able to set more quick replies. Okay, so we've now gone through the clock face, changing those, we've gone through notifications. So next, we're gonna go over how to answer the phone. All right, so I'm gonna initiate a call and I wanna show you what the options will look like, how to answer and how to decline. So here's our pop-up. It says we have an incoming call. I'm gonna tap the green button to answer or the red to decline. Once we tap the green button, it takes a couple of seconds for it to connect. It'll say connecting, but once it jumps to this next screen, where it shows who's calling and this, this is how you'll know that the call has been picked up and now we can begin talking. You can talk right through your Versa. There is a built-in speaker and microphone so it can hear you and you can do the full call right from your Fitbit. You do need to be within Bluetooth range of your phone or it will drop the call, so keep that in mind. Now I have a couple of options on screen here. First at the top, we have a call volume button and I can use um, the plus and minus to increase or decrease the sound volume of the call. If I wanna get off this screen, I'm just gonna put my finger on the left side of the Fitbit and swipe in to get off that screen. Now I'm back on the main uh, call screen. This button will mute the call, unmute. Tap the three dots in the center to access your keypad. So for example, if you're calling customer service or an automated line, you can select the options through the call. Again, start from the left side and swipe to the center to get away from that screen. Next, you can tap on the phone button to switch the call back to your phone. So now you can pick up your phone and begin talking right from the phone. If you'd like to switch it back to your Fitbit, you'll simply tap on the watch icon here and that will move the call back over to your Fitbit. And once you're all done with the call and you'd like to end it, tap on the red button and the call will end. Now, we will trigger a call one more time and I wanna show you what happens when you decline the call. So let's tap on the red button to decline this call. So it will immediately go off the screen. You'll see a pop-up that says missed call. Now you'll have some cool options here, one being to use our quick replies. So I can tap on this option here and I can send the person a text message saying, oh, hey, what's up? 
Can't talk now. Reply later. Sounds good. Let's hit what's up. And it will send that as a text message to the person that just called. Now, that is really all you need to know about answering a call. It's just red for decline, green to answer, and knowing how to navigate once you get into the call. So hope that was helpful. Let's jump to our next section here, which is going to be how to add a credit card to your Fitbit account. So you can then pay with your Fitbit when you're at a retailer that accepts Google Pay. So we're gonna tap on the wallet icon right here. We're gonna tap get started. And you'll need to grab a credit card to add it. Now, um, you really only have one option, which is the option here. This option is for residents who live in Taiwan. You will have an option to use the iPass function. But if you don't live in Taiwan, you won't be able to use that function. So just, that's it. We're gonna tap on credit debit. And you'll now need to enter your credit card along with your billing address. Once you have entered that information, it will ask you to accept the digital wallet terms and conditions. You can swipe up to read all of them here. You're gonna tap agree. And now it's gonna show you basically how to use it, which is when you see this logo, that's telling you that the retailer will accept Google Pay. And um, you can also go online to look up a list of some various uh, locations that do accept Google Pay as well. Now, uh, because of the credit card I'm using, it is asking for a verification. So you will need to select an option to verify your information to complete it linking it to your credit card. So let's do that now. I'm gonna select the arrow next to SMS. And this is usually one of the fastest options. You'll simply tap on this. It'll send you a text message with a code. You'll enter that code and then that will complete linking the card uh, to your Fitbit. All right, so my card is all verified. I sent the text, it was super quick. And basically here's my card. I can now go to the wallet and I have one card added, but you can also hit the plus in the upper right corner to, act, to add more cards to the wallet and give you some options when you're out and about. Now, if I jump over to my Fitbit here, I'm gonna uh, double tap on this power button here, or home button, excuse me, to take me to my shortcut screen. I'm gonna tap on the wallet, and you'll need to input that code, um, your locking pin code, that will allow you to access the credit card and put it in the mode to pay. So let's enter our code. It comes up, now you'll need to bring your wrist close to the reader in order for it to pay, and that's it. You're good to go. So that is how we use, that's how we add a card, and that's how we use the Google Pay option on your Versa. All right, we've gone through a ton. We've got one last thing to cover, and that's going to be changing the bands. So, Let's open up, this is the stock band that comes with it. Okay, so what you'll wanna do is simply flip your Fitbit over and take your, your fingernail and there's a little button right above where it says Fitbit, right here. I'm just going to press down with my fingernail and by pressing down, it will release the band and then you could take your new band and simply slide it in and just push and it should snap right into place. The other side should work exactly the same, taking your fingernail and just pressing down on this button here and just pull your band out and then insert the new band. And that's it. That's how you change out your bands. All right, this brings us to the end of our video. I hope all the information was helpful. Do me a favor, hit that like button if it was helpful. Leave me a comment as well and let me know if the video was helpful or if there was something else you wish I had covered. Um, if we get enough feedback, I will do a part two. Um, so leave your feedback down below. Um, I will also leave in the comment section a list of some of my favorite accessories. 
again for the Fitbit. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, just mentioning it again. Um, there's some other cool things you can get like a charging cradle. Um, you can get uh, an extra charger in case you'd like to maybe take one with you and leave one at home. Um, along with a screen protector, which is a very important thing to get because the screens do scratch very easily. So you'll see all those in the link down below. So check out those as well. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.